Welcome to uh, the Two Gurus Fireside Chat Show. Welcome to all. Uh, welcome, Mohan um, Fayore. <coughs> welcome, thank you. Good evening. And uh, we are looking forward to a very exciting discussion today around the developments taking place in India around COVID. No better person than Mr. Pai to, to walk us through all the different facets that is helping to move the agenda forward. Wherever it's possible, we'll, we'll intersperse it with U.S., but the primary focus is around India. I think India is, has demonstrated to the world it's a world leader in the management of COVID. <coughs> it has not received the due attention. It has had sporadic attention, and much of the focus has been around all the issues of China, the WHO, and the U.S. deaths that has plagued and the various variants. But in the process, the Indian effort has receded into, in my humble view, a little bit of a backstage. So, Mohandas, we will start with the whole COVID and what has been the COVID story in India <coughs> and why, what has led it to be so successful. Well, let me give some data, Sridhar. I think it's important for people to have data because we are seeing so many reports in the BBC, New York Times and others by Indian malcontents who are sepoys, as people call them, talking about the unmitigated disaster that India is. So let me give the data as what India has achieved. The world has, till yesterday, 107 million people who have been infected by COVID, 107 million. Uh, 2.4 million are dead. The United States has 27 million for a population of 325 million. 476,000 people are dead in the richest, most powerful nation on this planet, a country like no other in this world, the paragon of technology and everything else. India has only 10.8 million people who have been infected. That is, India has only maybe 35% of what the United States has for a population which is four times the United States. We are four times larger the United States. We are 35% of what the United States has in terms of infection. In terms of death, the United States has 476,000. We were 155,000. 155,000 means we are one third the United States in debt, in death. Four times the population. So one third. So what does it mean, Sridhar? It uh, basically means that India has done extremely well and we have vaccinated maybe 7 million people and we are giving free vaccine, vaccines to maybe 60 countries on the world. We are the largest production of vaccines for AstraZeneca in the world. We can produce 1.5 billion doses of vaccine to help the world. So India has done well. And why did India do well? Well, we had a very rigorous 45-day shutdown starting from the last week of March. Prime Minister Modi spoke to people. People shut down. Yes, there was a little bit of suffering. Migrants went away. They walked, etc. But remember, the Indian people are used to pain. Indian people are used to a lot of pain. New people in the United States are, you know, so very, so very cozy. You know, you can't take any pain. The water doesn't come in a tap. You don't know what to do, right? So you are very rich people. So we live like ordinary human beings, Amadmi, in this planet. So we can take pain. And people took pain and people came back. And the economy is coming back. I'll talk about the economy later. But as far as COVID has done, I think people have done well. And also, Sridhar, because we are a very dirty country, which all of you say unhygienic, we have more natural immunity than you. We have much more natural immunity. So I think if you look at uh, the zero or the COVID uh, cases, they say about 25, 30% of, of people have been infected have got natural immunity. So I think we have a lot of natural immunity. Maybe the fact that everybody has got a BCG vaccine when they were young, so many things that are there. So, you know, people are abused for being dirty, unhygienic, but the fact remains we are surviving. We got a lesser death rate than the whole world. We got a much, much lesser death rate than the United States, or the United Kingdom, or uh, most countries in the world, excluding Southeast Asia. Mm. I think that's a great, uh, and, you know, phenomenal summary. Uh, in terms of uh, layering the data relative to the world versus United States versus India, I think this is one of the questions uh, that we have been battling in United States as to what is the reason for uh, United States to have, and we don't have an answer as yet 
uh, for this big number that we see relative to the rest of the world. I think you have alluded to some of the factors which has differentiated India probably from the rest. See, one of the questions uh, that, that often pop up is, has the herd immunity in India relative to, uh, let us say, rest of the world? Because Indians generally kind of cluster together, notwithstanding the uh, lockdown, the, the very successful 45-day uh, lockdown. One of the attributes is probably India has done better with herd immunity relative to rest of the world. Well, maybe herd immunity, maybe innate immunity, uh, maybe more discipline. More people are wearing masks in South India. North India, they're not used to wearing masks or other things, but they're getting by quite fine. Bihar, the poorest state of India, is one of the lowest infections. And I was speaking to a friend of mine who goes to Dharavi, the big slum in uh, Mumbai. And their people are fine. I think they, all of them have got herd immunity. Uh, there was fear that they're going, a lot of people are going to die. Not many died. Only 1,000 people died in a population, maybe 2 or 3 million. And uh, many people, you know, the people themselves, they say, you know, we leave here, you know, things are not so good, but we got immunity. Whatever it is, see, the, the data says very clearly, India has done extremely well compared to the United States, compared to Europe, compared to all the rich countries, exclude Asia. Japan has not had much infection. We don't know the reality of China, but China seems to have done well. Southeast Asia, Korea has done well. But if you look at the rich countries of the OECD, Europe, Europe has not done well. United States, you know, has done what the United States does. It's big in everything, including infection, including death, including spending money, etc. It's the richest, most powerful country in the world, right? So I think, you know, you must give credit to India. Right, right. Okay. So I think the, uh, the my, uh, my, you know, before we wrap this uh, segment of this particular topic, uh, India is today the uh, net exporter or evolving to be the net, a net, net exporter of the uh, medicine uh, or the vaccines for the, to the world. Um, is it finally calibrated and balanced both to meet the vast Indian needs as well as the global needs? Is the production supply chains are scalable enough to sustain them in the in the foreseeable future yes i think our prime minister said by july august we'll vaccinate 300 million indians <coughs> we have just vaccinated the first round of all the health workers and friend care workers second round has started from today i think and he has said that uh, 300 million by july august and we will do 300 million capacity in india is 1.5 billion per year and we have our company sending out shipments every single day to all the countries and helping them out. Just the other day, Premier Trudeau of Canada called up uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, asking for his help. And Prime Minister Modi assured him that India will stand by Canada, despite uh, Trudeau egging on our uh, agitators and uh, making some very silly remarks about India, etc. Uh, India has treated the world well. And India's, uh, you know, policy is that, you know, we treat the whole world as a family, right? So India stood by everybody. And India yeah. will stand by everybody. India will say we have enough for us and enough for everybody else. Great. Uh, enough for most, most, most others. <laughs> yeah, to support. Excluding the rich countries. Uh, well, you know, I think we are, we are ordering also some medicines from uh, notwithstanding the fact. Eventually, we'll be the, one of the largest, the largest producer. I think the prediction is that uh, projection is will be about 5.6 billion. And India is the second with about 3.6 or 3.7 billion uh, vaccines coming out annually. I think... Uh, and but then, remember, Sridhar, you must remember, Sridhar, the richest country in the world was not the most generous country. It cornered all the vaccines, paid money to Pfizer, everybody else, to make sure that you guys are protected. You didn't care a damn about the rest of the world. You said, let them go die. It doesn't matter. We will protect our population. You paid enormous amount of money. You used the laws to make sure that everybody was inside. And you took advantage. And the world has seen that very well. In fact, I was in the meeting of the South Center, which is a think tank for South countries in Geneva, and I'm on the board, and they were uh, talking about the iniquity of global distribution of the vaccine by the rich countries. So I think all the countries in the world have seen this, and they're very unhappy about what, uh, uh, what is happening. The United States, instead of leading the world in making sure that every human being on the planet has an equal chance of survival, uh, they said, you know, lock themselves up as usual and said, you know, you know, we, we, are, we, are going to, we are going to do everything, put all everybody and take corner all the supplies, and we want to do it ourselves. I, I have a very different view to your view, but that's okay, because we don't want to. Uh, United States actually took the lead 
uh, in basically, um, this is going back to February, March, when data was very scant. Uh, President Trump, at that point of time, took the lead, pre-funded the research, pre-funded yes. the research uh, for the world to benefit. When a vaccine is produced by AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson or Pfizer or BioNTech, which came a bit later, or to the Israel, Israeli, um, he, we funded close to $10 billion for vaccines to come out around the world, not to corner the supplies, but the vaccines to be out. So India benefited because India has joint venture with uh, Pfizer, j and &J. The most recent one is BioNTech, but India also did its own. So I just don't know. I mean, Europeans may have a different view. They kind of went to sleep possibly. But Europeans did play a part in their own way because the biotech pharma industry is very heavily located in, as you probably know, between Germany and uh, Switzerland and, of course, uh, even in, in Britain. So I don't think U.S. cornered, but U.S. led the world efforts, pre-funded. And by the way, they delivered. President Trump delivered the vaccine in November, having promised it in February. OK, nobody expected him to deliver. Everybody thought this is just another rhetoric. And again, U.S. became the first nation with U.K. to roll these vaccines out with simultaneous research funded, pre-funded. This, this is unusual. It was not a research grant. It is a pre-funding of the buying of the vaccines. Just the Pfizer alone, we paid $1.95 billion. So I yeah. don't agree with the argument okay. that... Uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> but you can you can also you can also tell your listeners uh, viewers uh, how much of the vaccine has, has been sent by the United States to other countries from the United States. Well, I think that the 340, uh, 340 there's, there is still we have six we have a vaccine shortage here. We just ordered two hundred million vaccines to vaccinate okay. people. Look okay, at, okay, Shridhar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not debating. Look, we have deaths. 492,000 people. I know, I know. You're in bad shape. You deserve to get all the vaccine in the world to save your lives. You're in real bad shape. You very, got to be careful, Siddhar. You got to be careful. Very, Don't go out in the streets in New York. Oh, no, very, very bad shape because it is mismanagement. I mean, India, I mean, I think the, the in my view, there are three messages, uh, you know, from India, which is, you, know, you guys have, you know, India has done a great job in managing it, number one. Yeah. Number yeah. two, uh, in, besides the inherent immunity, uh, this is what I've heard. You can, you know, you're also, you know, big in the in the hospital industry. They've used, they're willing to use protocols, which is yeah. not the norm. Discipline. Yeah, right. So, which is not the norm. Anyway, Mohan, thank you for that yeah. uh, for that segment. We'll now leave a, we wish India all success. We wish vaccine diplomacy to be one of the pillars yes. and aspects of uh, India's uh, epitome uh, yes. in terms of the, the world world heritage and world contribution. So very proud, very happy uh, as, a, as a person of Indian origin.